thank you very much. And hi, everybody. And thanks for this opportunity. Um, I'm Özge Togay, uh, working as Information Counseling and Legal Assistance Manager uh, for NRC's Syria Response Office. And I'm also coordinating House, Land uh, and Property Technical Working Group under Protection Cluster for Syria Response. Today, I will talk about the Syrian displaced women, their HRP rights, and how they enjoy their rights specifically in the camp settlements. Uh, I will start with the legal framework. I will talk about the framework very briefly, and then I will talk about the obstacles and challenges women face. And then I will uh, continue with the case studies uh, we identify in the field and our response. At the end, I will finalize with the um, key, key recommendation. So in Syria, um, there is both constitution and the Sharia provisions. Uh, religious law, and um, according to both of them, women's property rights are protected. However, uh, due to the patriarchal practices, social norms, cultural norms, women are not able to fully enjoy their rights, their HRP rights specifically. And uh, the patriarchal practices, of course, for that reason, create discrimination and gender inequality in the community. When it comes to the obstacle, the first one is uh, for women is to obtain their natal inheritance. Because of the discriminatory customs, women are not able to um, have their natal inheritance. And uh, they are, most of the time, they are given small amount of money um, in exchange of waiving their rightful inheritance rights. Um, and most of the time, this money um, is less than the actual share and uh, it is determined by the brother or their relatives. And it is called murada, and they have to accept this. Um, otherwise, they will be excluded from their families and they will lose the community acceptance. So, uh, and there's an understanding in the society that sister should help brothers, wife should help husband. So it is mainly woman's responsibility to support men when it comes to the natal inheritance. Uh, the other challenge is um, related to marital property. In Syria, even though um, neither in the Syrian law or the Sharia provision, nothing mentioning about the, um, the property law, um, marital property law mainly belongs to men in practice. Uh, in the law, it's not mentioning, but uh, most of the time, man has control um, all the properties. And uh, even the woman has the property before the marriage or during the marriage, uh, most of the time man has this, man has the power uh, over the property. And when it comes to the uh, property rights for divorce and widow women, this situation is more challenging. Um, as you know, due to the displacement, many people do not have access to civil documentation and they are not able to prove that they, are, they, are, they were married, they were divorced, or their husband um, was their husband was that. Um, however, uh, even though they have the documentation, most of the time their um, uh, family in law are not letting them to claim their rights. For that reason, this situation is um, more challenging for them. After very briefly explaining uh, the context. Uh, we know that property rights can empower women and it can also change the social dynamic and it can improve the gender inequality. Gender equality. However, uh, it is quite important for the humanitarian organization to work on this and to provide people with the um, needed assistance. Most of the time, people, um, due to the lack of the information and knowledge, people are not able to enjoy their rights. Uh, most of the time they don't know about with what they are entitled and for that reason it is quite important to provide assistance for them. Um, when it comes to the field, we have many, um, many similar cases, common cases we identify in the field and today I would like to talk about three of them. We know that HRP rights are not standalone, it is mainly, it is most of the time it is related with the child protection issues, gender-based violence issues. Um, and for that reason, humanitarian improved 
humanitarian coordination is quite important. Um, I will start with one case. Uh, it is actually a child protection case. Uh, a girl, 13 years old, she was married with an older man. And af after a while, uh, the man decided to divorce her. They were living in the camp. Her family was living in the camp and uh, the husband sent her back to her family. However, the parents didn't accept her and she lost her house. Uh, she was minor. She wasn't able to go to any other camp alone. And uh, in Syria, there is no structured child protection mechanism. For that reason, she didn't get any support from anybody. At the end, the parents accepted her, but during this uh, situation, she didn't get any support from anybody. And this situation is mainly showing us how uh, age, not only HRP rights, but child protection issues are interrelated with each other. And how land and property issues is not only about having a shelter, it is also about uh, um, living in a um, safe and uh, safety and dignity. Uh, NRC at that time uh, couldn't support the, uh, the, both the parents and the child uh, because we couldn't get any consent from parents or the husbands or the child herself. Uh, but after that, we identified, we know that there are many similar cases in the region. NRC uh, signed an agreement, a memorandum of understanding with Save the Children in uh, Middle East um, and North Africa regional level. And now uh, we are going to provide joint child protection, legal child protection activities in the field uh, to address this child protection risk and HIV issues mainly. Uh, the second issue, the second case is actually about the, um, the, the rights of property rights of women. Um, the case is identified through the information sessions uh, of our team. And uh, the woman is married, living in the camp, and uh, the husband got married again to the second wife. According to Syrian law, uh, she has she is entitled to live in the separate house. Uh, but they were living in the camp, and the camp managers uh, didn't accept to provide them with the second shelter, and uh, she didn't know what to do. Uh, she wasn't able to in this situation. She wasn't able to claim her rights to anybody. Um, but we talked with the camp manager and uh, it was advised to provide them with another shelter. This is again very similar and common case uh, in Syria because most of the time shelters are distributed to the men uh, and the number of families uh, are not really counted, um, assessed according to this. For that reason, we are always suggesting to, to do the in-depth need assessment to understand how many shelters, for example, people need and uh, what is the context in general. Um, and the third case is about the importance of the uh, having civil documentation in Syria. Um, I'm trying to provide the information and the cases um, specifically from the camps. Uh, and this, in this situation, uh, in this case, uh, she's she is married with five children and her husband was detained in the beginning of the conflict. And for last five years, she didn't hear back from the husband. At the end, she was told that the husband passed away. However, uh, during the displacement, they couldn't register their marriage and uh, she didn't have any proof that he was his, uh, her husband. Uh, she didn't, she feel um, safe and she wanted to go to the widow and divorced woman camps but she wasn't accepted because she didn't have any proof. After we uh, supported her with the counseling session, uh, she went to the population department. However, this time she needed to be witnesses and uh, her family-in-law didn't accept to be a witness because if she registered uh, marriage and that, uh, she would be able to claim her rights. Uh, in this situation, the only uh, solution for the woman is uh, going to, to the court. However, in Syria, women are not, um, it's not really common among women to go to the court. And most of the time, uh, people think that it is a shame and the gossiping is increasing if they know that women are going to court, uh, claiming their rights, uh, because 
in 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 practice it is for them it is um, doing something against their family and their culture however uh, this woman decided to um, decided to go to the court and now the the case is ongoing i can say that this is a successful case but we know that this situation is happening a lot and especially uh, widow and divorced women, they are not able to claim their rights because they don't have any proof or their, um, the, their family-in-law doesn't want to support them uh, to claim their rights. NRC to address the HRP uh, violations uh, in, in Syria is providing individual counseling sessions, information sessions, um, collaborative dispute solution services for the people and we are also um, providing referral services and trying to improve our coordination with uh, specialized humanitarian organizations like Save the Children and other gender-based violence organizations. Additionally, we know that it is quite important not to work only with the beneficiaries, but also support the community leaders and the camp managers. For that reason, we are providing HRP rights training for the camp managers to inform them about the rules and regulation and how they, how they can mitigate the ongoing risk in the field. Um, we, I think I'm going to be fast. Uh, we have a um, few key rec recommendations uh, after working in the field for a while. Um, we know that it is quite important to empower women to claim their property rights, uh, both through formal or uh, customary mechanism. It is also important to provide them with economic and social support and include them in planning and conduct of recovery. It is specifically important uh, to provide them with the safe shelter options because most of the time women do not have this option. And if they want, if they are divorced or they are widowed or they want to be away from their husband, they cannot really go anywhere, especially when the situation doesn't allow them. Um, I'm going to finish my presentation with the booklet NRC recently published. Uh, we, put, we published this stories of Syrian women, their family and property. The booklet has five true uh, stories um, told by Syrian women. You can find it in Arabic and English. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, but in this uh, booklet, we aim to give the um, chance to Syrian women to talk about their own struggle and how to uh, claim their HRP rights and how to enjoy them in Syria. I think that is all from my side. Thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Osgir. I think that book you just um, you just um, showed was the same book that the same author who uh, wrote the book um, about COVID, the children's book for COVID, the one about the dragon that was sort of, um, that went around the world last year, um, which, is, which is a great book. Um, thanks, we have, we have a minute or two for questions. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, one thing, thank you for that presentation, by the way, it was very powerful. Um, and thanks for sharing the experiences and stories from, um, from Syria. Um, I guess to kind of relate this back to uh, camp management, practice. Um, you said that HLP training for camp managers would help mitigate some of the risks um, that these women are facing, um, you know, in their in their residences. I mean, how, like, can you maybe elaborate a bit more on that? So it's like, how, how would the function of camp manager with that kind of training um, help reduce these incident, incident, incidences um, of eviction? Sure. Um... For example, now we are informing camp managers when they are providing shelter uh, for the families uh, to put the name of men and women together uh, because then in case of separation, divorce or the death of the husband, women can claim their right. Otherwise, they cannot do this. Uh, this is the one example. The other one is uh, about the camps, uh, widow and divorce camps. Um, in these camps, women cannot live there if they have children over 14. So we are also trying to address this issue and trying to be, um, um, trying to, not to convince them, but provide them with the information and uh, come up with the options for the people because 
otherwise women needs to leave with their children or the children needs to leave and they would not have any support mechanism. So they will not have any shelter. It will create another risk for them. So for that reason, we are always in um, coordination with the camp managers to, to come up with the solution for the for women in Northwest Syria. I think you are muted. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I, I encourage everyone who has questions to put them in the chat. Um, if you stick around and answer those, um, that would be highly appreciated. Um, thanks again very much for, for your presentation. Um, it was very powerful. Um, thank you.